All right. All right. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Odum and Andrea show and uh, or podcast. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever this is, this is where myself and my beautiful wife, Andrea, get together and we talk about a book um, or most notably a person. Well, a person that wrote a book <laughs> um, about some adventure or something that they've done that is really cool. And um, we try to see if it's anything that we want to incorporate into our um, upcoming adventures. Um, and today... We're reading a book by Colin O'Brady, mm-hmm. From Fire to Ice. Oh. <laughs> Look at you. I'm just reading the title now because I, I don't know what these books yeah, are I know. right mm-hmm. now. Okay, yeah. Colin O'Brady, From Fire to Ice, Crossing Antarctica Alone. Oh, that's the tagline. The book is called The Impossible First. Yes. Okay, From Fire to Ice, Crossing Antarctica Alone. Mm-hmm. So I'm assuming he's going to be the first guy to cross Antarctica alone. Here's a picture. Uh, you can see this guy all by himself with his tent. And, uh, oh, that's not even a tent. That's like a sled. Oh, my goodness. He's carrying a whole lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. I guess so. There's not like a corner store or a gas station. You could just stop by and pick up your uh, uh, no. your your Timmy's or, or whatever. Unfortunately, no. Yeah. So, all right. Well, this should be interesting. Mm-hmm. So, let's get started. Um, of course, if you like any of the stuff that we do, we have a bunch other more other more podcasts <laughs> over at odumandandrea.com. So, check it out. And with that... Take it away. Tell us about The Impossible First, this crazy guy named Colin O'Brady. All right. So Colin grew up in the Pacific Northwest, and he was actually born in a commune while his mom was like listening to Bob Marley's uh, redemption song. Oh, sorry, what's a commune? A co- just like a bunch of people living together in like one kind of area. Huh. It's like a hippie kind of okay. thing. What, s- what, in the 70s then? Yeah, the late 70s. No, 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 80s, because I think he's younger than us. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, and so he grew up in like Portland area, Portland, Oregon. Okay. And so kind of spent his whole life like outside doing lots of hiking because it's mm. just so beautiful there. So we did a lot of that sort of stuff. His parents were really into like health food stuff. Be they, I don't know if they owned or just worked at a health food store. Um, when he was young, but his parents did end up divorcing when he was 10. And then his dad moved to Hawaii and his dad actually now has an organic farm in Hawaii. Oh, interesting. So that kind of like health food stuff and like wellness has always kind of been a big piece of his life. Right. Um, but like legit health and wellness or just like, no, I think it was, you know, le- le- no, no, no. <laughs> like le- trying to sell, you know, marketing and whatever products that are just crap that are no, no, pushed as no, no. He, he, they, the, the parents would always bring home like different like products that people would drop off and get them to try it to see if it if it was good or if it mm-hmm. was crap. So to see whether they would carry it in the store or not. Yeah. So yeah, you know I me. Mean? It's just I know eating healthy, unprocessed foods. Not how I shouldn't say healthy because that's not descriptive. But eating fruits and vegetables, you know, if yeah. you get them uh, get food unprocessed. Yeah. Eat natural. You should be good to go. For sure. Anyways. Um, So then in 1992, the Barcelona Olympics, he was, or Summer Olympics, he was watching, um, I forget the guy's name. I think it's like Marco Pueblo or something. And so he watched this guy, he's U.S., win the 100 meter butterfly. (laughs) Yeah. This 100 meter butterfly. And he was just like so invested in watching this guy win this like Olympic Mm. gold medal. And was Was it one of those things? where he was touted like you know here in canada where the olympics was it 96 where um i think it was donovan bailey was pumped and hyped up yeah, so, much so much where it's like the yeah. whole country kind of got behind him and then watched the race and yeah finally he won it was like ah, oh, it was amazing maybe yeah i'm not really sure so yeah. but it just he just says it was one of those things it just it just captured he was just captured yeah, by it and really sure. inspired by it and so um so he started also swimming and so eventually he goes to yale and he i think he got a scholarship for and like he swam for yale the whole time he yeah. was there that's the one good thing about the olympics i mean maybe i don't know i mean it's always been commercial but it seems like it's a lot more commercial now and so many doping scandals and all that kind of stuff but just the pureness of just competition and enga- you know that yes. friendly competition where every all the athletes get together and they compete but they're still all friends or whatever like that kind of pure competition and camaraderie and friendship yeah and it's just the way that it can inspire people Absolutely. like a whole generation of people to pick up the mantle and be like oh that's so inspiring i'm just going to go and do that i feel like it's a lot of that stuff is missing um yeah in today's age 
uh, yeah. where competition is like even seen as a bad thing and negative thing. It's like we can't have our kids competing. It's like why not? I know. <laughs> why not? That's, That's how you how push yourself to get better. Well, and we'll come back to this. This is mm. a really good point, but we'll come back to competition and why it is very important. Yeah. Okay. Um, Interesting. So this was in 2008. Um, he finishes his degree. He has a degree in, I think it's economics. Um, and so I'll just double check here. But yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, bachelor's of economics. Mm -hmm. And so he takes the next five months and he's like, you know, I could go and I could get a job just like all my other friends and, and do that sort of thing. Or I could just like take all the money I've saved up from like painting houses right during university right. and just travel so what's going on no, you're good um so he starts he goes to his dad's organic farm in hawaii and then he goes to new zealand um he stops in fiji he meets a girl in fiji finds out she's america's megan <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> finds out that she's she's american and she's doing like a semester in sydney australia and was just in fiji kind of on a vacation so then he goes to sydney and he ends up staying there for like a month and just mm. like starts this relationship with her name's jenna yeah and so then he's there for a month they kind of have this relationship and then he goes to thailand and he's meeting he meets his best friend in thailand mm. and so they're just you know they're like being his new best friend or like he already had a best friend oh, yeah, and then yeah. he meets him there. Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. yeah. And so they're just kind of doing, you know, early 20s guy stuff in Thailand. You could be a little bit more specific I'm than going that, to. doing guy stuff I'm in going, Thailand. I'm because going to. that could mean a whole lot of different things to whoever, whoever So they're there. They're just, they're hanging out, drinking beer. And apparently there's like lots of like they have these like jump, like these big long um, ropes and they soak them in kerosene and then set them on fire. And this is on the beach and people are supposed to like jump rope over this thing. Okay. So not the safest thing. Yeah. So, but when you're a 20 year old, yeah. you think you're six <clears throat> foot tall and bulletproof. So. Well, maybe eight foot tall. Eight foot tall. A lot yes. of people. Sorry, I was six <laughs> foot tall. Well, it's big for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for you, I guess. True. So he goes and he goes to jump this, this rope and he mistimes his jump and yeah, I gotta take it back to grade school and do some jump roping. He gets <laughs> tangled. Well, he's had a couple oh. beers by this point. He gets tangled in this Shit. rope that's, oh, that's on not fire. Good. And so it's tangled around him. And because it's soaked in kerosene, it gets it's his all clothes all soaked. So he's on fire up to his neck. Oh, yeah. So luckily, the ocean's right there. And just on survival instinct, he just runs into the ocean, not knowing what else to do. And he comes out and everybody's like, oh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. But he's on this like crazy small island. So they have to wait for a ferry to get to like mm -hmm. an actual the clinic. Hospital. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's, he's looks horrible horrible like everyone mm. is a sound so luckily though he has his best friend with him that takes him they go across and he is with him like the whole time so they about four days after the accident the doctor comes in the Thai doctor and says like you're never gonna walk normally again if you do walk and so it takes eight so how, how long was he on fire for I don't know he doesn't <clears throat> say he doesn't say well, does, I mean it doesn't take long it doesn't take long so he has He's given, obviously, he's given all kinds of painkillers, and it takes eight surgical sessions to, like, debris, debride his wounds. And so um, he's, air, he's airlifted eventually to, a bit like, a bigger hospital in Bangkok, mm -hmm. and then his mom meets him there. Yeah. And then eventually, I think he's in the hospital there for about three months, and then he's flown to Portland. And so slowly his wounds heal, um, but there's damage to ligaments in his knee joints and in his ankle joints. And so he, and then he's had like, has to wear like compression socks and even like the like pain is more like, he's just more sensitive to pain on his yeah. legs. There's a horrible picture in there showing what his legs look oh. like. It's really awful. Let's take a look. So, um, so back like, um, does this place still do this jump rope? I really hope that they don't. So, Cause it's just, it's just not smart, especially when you have people around drinking. Like he doesn't say he was drunk or anything, but I'm sure that doesn't help. Yeah, this stuff is like here. Yeah, it's like they're purple. Yeah, let's put that up there. Yeah, it's pretty rough. That's focusing, but yeah. Yeah, so his mom is like instrumental to his recovery. So while he's in Thailand, she says, "Okay, 
um, well, what do you want to work towards? Because let's have a goal for you. Because he's a really goal-oriented person. And she's like, okay, so what goal do you want to work towards? And it just kind of comes into his head. And he's like, I want to work towards doing a triathlon right and so she's like okay cool that's what we're going to work towards that's our goal Mm -hmm. meanwhile like she's crying in the halls because it's she's like i don't know what's going to happen like this looks so awful and it's just um sorry my throat again yeah it's weird (coughs) Ah, excuse me so in the hospital it's just him and his friend and his mom yeah and then eventually his friend has to go back yeah 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 go to work or whatever Yeah, whatever so um he gets home and he's like living with his mom and she's helping with his rehab and she just kind of puts a chair in front of him and says okay your job today is to get from like your wheelchair and walk to the chair chair. and so it's just like slowly slowly small Mm -hmm. moves but his mom was just like never gave up and was just instrumental in like really pushing him Mm -hmm. she's young i was saying she's pretty young like she was young when she had him uh i don't know there's no picture of her in there oh i thought that was no no okay. that's somebody else oh. that's i think that's jenna probably, probably his girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. yeah yeah so then a year and a half later after the fire in 2009 he's just like okay i get i guess i better like get a real job so he moves to chicago and he puts his economics degree to work as a commodities trader and then he also signs up for the Chicago triathlon. Mm. So he, he runs a triathlon and he's just, you know, like he trained for it. He found some people to help him train like a group and he's training. And then he runs so the, does sh- the swimming and the biking. Yeah. And the run mm. and everything. And then he goes out to lunch with his grandma. And then his grandma was like, well, do you want to go back and like, see what, what place you got in? And he's like, oh yeah, I guess like so. he has lunch after he did this triathlon. Yeah. Is a triathlon like eight hours? I don't, I don't know how long it is, but. Anyways, it doesn't matter. He goes like out for like lunch like with his. Dinner, he goes out for lunch with his with his grandma or whatever, and so they go back and they look at like where he is, mm-hmm. and the organizers like, are you, like we've been calling you, like Colin O'Brady, like we've been calling you for like hours now, mm. and he's like, oh, like well, what did I do wrong? <laughs> and, yeah. he doesn't, and, he's, and they're like, no, 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 you like, won. You won. <laughs> and he's like, oh, like just for this thing and they're like no 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 like you won the whole freaking thing (laughs) so he's like shocked by this yeah so then are there not like triathlon people i don't know is goggins not there (laughs) what's going on so (laughs) then well it's not epic enough for goggins obviously but so then coincidentally that night he was invited to a barbecue at a friend's house and he meets the dad at the at the friend's house triathlon is that the same thing as an iron man no iron man is different because it's way longer this one was an olympic distance so it's less than an yeah, iron man right yeah. so that's why it wouldn't be as long right as so how many do you know what the distances are the steps are in there but right. uh, yeah it doesn't important. matter so he it's coincidentally this dad is there and this dad owns a commodities firm and the dad said to colin low like what did you get up to today and he's like oh well, like i want to try won this today and the guy's mm-hmm. like really shocked about this especially knowing like his history of where he's come from and so he's like i feel like you have like a future here in triathlons and i want to offer to sponsor you to Mm. pursue this and so he's like awesome goes goes into work the next day and quits yeah so jenna and him have been in this like long distance relationship and so she because she's going to school in florida so she eventually moves to she's Portland. She's Australian, right? No, no, she's American. <coughs> she was okay. just in Australia just for like an exchange. <coughs> so she moves to be with him in Portland and Oregon. And then she has a, a poli sci degree. So she's helping with his mom's um, campaign to be mayor of Portland. And so she's like uprooted her life. She's invested in not just him, but like his family. And then he says... Wow. Um, nine months later, he's invited to join an elite, um, triathlon training team in California, part, part of the times in California, part of the time is in Australia. And so then he just leaves. And so obviously like their relationship is like done because Mm -hmm. she's pissed. It's just like, I've done all of this for you and you're just gonna gonna like up and leave. (coughs) So it sounds like there's a little bit missing to the story, but maybe in the the relationship. No, I don't know. Yeah. Um, so then he only lasts 10 months because he completely overtrains. And so mm. it just doesn't really work out and he has to quit. Um, like quit the sponsorship even? Not quite yet. Not, mm. not quite yet. He still, he still does triathlon. So he comes back and he like persuades 
Jenna to take him back because he says like, I, yeah, because he was talking to like another really elite athlete and talking about like her best moments um, of like winning triathlons. And she was like, well, it wasn't even that great because I would win, but I would have no one there to cheer me on. So right. he's realizing mm. like, yeah, I need to get back to my family. I need to get back to Jenna, like, cause he's just in love with her. So they decide like, he's still going to do triathlons, but they'll do it together and she'll kind of manage him basically mm. and do all the sponsorships and just all of that stuff. Yeah. And Lucky so him for her taking him back. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. And so at the same time as they're traveling, like they're traveling all around to do these triathlons, they agree like everywhere they go, they're just going to do like an adventure or something together to climb a mountain or whatever, do something oh, together. Right. So eventually um, he proposes to her and they get, they get married after all of that. Um, so then in the process of him trying to convince her to take him back, they're driving from, she like goes to pick him up in California and then drive home to Oregon and they're kind of camping on the way. And it's interesting because this is really similar to what happened with Cheryl Strayed in Wild because she picks up a book at this outdoor store about climbing the seven summits. So the Seven Summits is a big deal in like the adventure community because it's climbing all of the tallest mountains on each of the seven continents. And so she picks up this book. That includes Mount Everest, obviously, right? Of course, yeah. So he's like, oh, okay, so this is interesting and this, so he thinks about it and... um, Yeah, so then that's what he decides to do. But not only the Seven Summits but it's called the Explorer's Grand Slam. So you do all seven summits Mm -hmm. and then you do the two poles. Oh, interesting. And so with the two poles, you have to get to 89 degrees latitude and then walk. Like that's like the, like you can start wherever, but you have to at least start at 89 latitude and then walk to the pole or hike or whatever it is. 89 to to 90. Basically. Yeah, exactly, exactly, to the pole. What do you mean start there? Like, you get the plane ride into the 89th degree? Yeah, yeah, mm. but you have to at least start there. I mean, you could walk further out, but but any, yeah. but any closer, and it, it doesn't count well, no, towards like that explores. You're just getting dropped off there, doesn't yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although, I don't know if any plane could fly there. I mean, flat Earth, I mean, if there's an ice wall, you obviously <laughs> can't get there, right? So, yeah. <laughs> so I don't want to fall off the face of the Earth. Yeah, so they they set up actually a nonprofit, and so the nonprofit is called Beyond Seven Two, like seven slash two, and so it's their goal is to inspire other kids to kind of mm. go for their goals, and even if it's not like this kind of crazy goal, yeah. it's his whole thing is like, what's your Everest? Like, what is the oh. thing that you want to achieve? <laughs> I was just here thinking of we're going to have to have a story of another guy cl- climbing Mount Everest if he's going to do these seven summits. But anyways, so <laughs> but yeah, that's fantastic though. Cause like we're saying, yeah, pushing kids to, to reach out their dreams and achieve their goals. Exactly. It's, it's and so like he goes around and he talks to schools and they, they put it within like the schools put it within like their curriculums to kind of track him as he does like all these different feats. And so they include like climate change and mindset and like all of those things mm. that he's like with the schools he's associated with. So, um, what was my question? That's interesting though, that he has all this stuff and that, the teachers and the schools pick that up before he's even done it <clears throat> yeah. because what if he doesn't do it? That's a lot of pressure on him. Yep. Probably. Cause has he even <laughs> climbed before? Like, is he even a climber? Well, yeah. Like growing up, I think in the Pacific Northwest, like he's mm, done. Right. And when him and Jenna were going around, like they would climb all the different mountains wherever they but were. But like actual rock climbing or you know what I mean? Like you don't have to rock climb. It's, so it's not that type it's of climbing. Not that type That's what I mean. Climbing. That's what I'm asking. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, so, so it's hiking. Hmm? It's hiking. Well, it's a bit more than hiking, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then also added to the Explorer's Grand Slam, he wanted to be the fastest person to accomplish it. Hmm. And so... At the time. Because isn't there that guy that did that thing? Or the 14 Peaks? Was that guy? Did Nims Persia. Yeah. Didn't he do yeah. like the seven in like seven months or something like yeah, that? Yeah. So that was like the 14, 14 peaks over like 8,000 feet. Right. Yeah. So well, that's, that's what different he did. though. That's it's a different thing. Yeah. yeah. But still, so anyways. Well, so what's the record before he took it in terms of doing the I seven? Don't, I'm not sure. I didn't look it up. But he does it in he does it in four months, and so mm. 
the la the the story is crazy so he goes to everest is his second last one everest is second last one and then it would be um denali in alaska so mm -hmm. he gets denied like the weather's just crappy for their first put for his first push to get to the summit of everest mm -hmm. like and, when he's at uh, camp four yeah and so he's just they're just like oh, i don't think there's going to be another one at the weather window like you're not going to be able to to make this record but he does there's another window he makes it to the top and then he's trust those tight windows he's on his <laughs> way down and jenna says okay like i know you're tired and i know you're in your tent but you got to get your boots back on and you got to get to on, camp three. on a helicopter at base camp i have a helicopter coming for you at base camp and it's going to take you to the plane and you're going to fly to denali and you're going to climb denali in three days rather than three weeks because if you can do it in three days then you will not only have broken the speed record for the explorers grand slam but mm -hmm. for the seven summits as well oh interesting yeah so he made so he already, to he do already, it he's already did the the two walks around the poles at this uh, point? yes the, yeah wow. yeah exactly oh we're gonna talk about that what is adventures about that or we'll get there oh, all right yeah. it's like oh so the then suspense has been broken he does it okay uh, so <laughs> so they get a helicopter to pick him up at base camp yeah uh, at base camp yeah not camp four no no no, not, uh, no a helicopter can't get, get to so camp four. Say. yeah so how long does he take to get from camp four to base camp i don't know honey you should know this you're there first uh, he's not he doesn't tell generally us. how long does it take people to get uh, probably a couple of days okay yeah you probably right. do it. you could probably do it in one but i think most people do it in a couple of days so yeah assuming yeah. that there was things like oxygen and uh, <laughs> not and not fatigue or whatever mm -hmm. in terms of the distance interesting okay yeah so, so he's supposed to climb it in three weeks but he did it in three days yeah is that one like aside from everest are the other ones you know diff like dangerous like do yeah. a lot of people still die on these other ones 100 percent because of oxygen again or yeah, just, just it's cold they're also or? really dangerous as well yeah storms but do you need guides for all of these yep they all need guides you can't just none of them are just hey i'm just gonna walk in There's well if you've never been there before right mm. of course you're gonna yeah, need a know. ride yeah know. yeah so I know, i'm just thinking about you know like sleeping giant or whatever you know you just well that's what it is yeah you just go up <laughs> so he also did the he wanted to do the speed record for um getting to the top of the highest point in all 50 states 50 states mm. so he also did that one and he did that one in 21 days so it's just like another mm. so like another that's, that that's, that's got to be expensive made. because yeah you gotta logistically you gotta yeah the helicopters so that was that. that was a whole big story too like the sponsorships and everything that happened i won't get into it because it's not really pertinent but right. it's but it's it's really interesting in terms of doing that the 50 peaks in 20 days or whatever just for, uh, when he decides to go from being a professional triathlete to becoming like an adventurer professional adventurer <laughs> yeah so that it's it's a really interesting story and it shows their tenacity and it's really amazing of but like getting sponsors yeah, yeah, yeah i don't even need to get point. into it yeah maybe that'll be if we ever have some kind of marketing show or whatever <laughs> yeah but it's something probably for us to consider yeah whatever we're gonna do and seeing how we can yeah, you know, potentially do go that route if that's something we want to do mm -hmm. i don't know there's pros and cons to it and like you know if you want to be beholden to sponsors or whatever mm -hmm. so then at the same time they're kind of and i'm not really sure why they had their eye on it i guess maybe because he's been to antarctica before but in 2016 and in 2017 there were two attempts to cross the continent of, of antarctica unsupported and unassisted so it like on his own so it has been crossed the continent has been crossed before but it has not been an unassisted un um supported supported well, so what's the okay I got, yes. a, I got a couple questions yes this what's is going to be really important later all right on what's too, the yes. difference between unassisted and unsupported okay so unsupported is you just have like he has everything on his sled there's no like drops like remember how so getting a drop would be like support. food yes right. or okay. there's obviously like there's bases like research bases across antarctica and it's like not like mailing a package to yourself there you're just carrying everything all at right. once so that's be supported yeah or even if you stopped in at one of these base camps yeah to that's to, uh, yeah to say hello yeah <laughs> no can't can't do that you can say hi to the people you just can't go inside the buildings or even right. use like the porta potty or anything right. like that so that's unsupported unassisted is someone coming with you it's all under your own power right. so there was the one dogs 
Hmm? No sled dogs. No sled dogs. And then there was another guy who actually did it, and this is going to be important later. Snow machine. <laughs> there was another guy that did it, and he had like a kite that would help, would catch oh, yeah, the wind. The yeah. wind. And like it ski, would, basically. Yeah, he did like over, I think it was like 130 miles in a day using oh, that yeah, kite. Of yeah, course. so that, yeah. So that's assistance. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. assistance. Yep. So in 2016. Um, so. Now, oh yeah, my second question mm-hmm. was going to be, now you're saying they're crossing the Antarctic. Is this north to south or east west? So this is, he's going to, well, there's a map here. We'll just get into it. Um, Do you know what I mean? Like. Yep. So it's going from, he, he leaves from Chile. And so he gets across the Rhone ice shelf. So this would be like... Does that freeze or do they... Con- yeah, so the ice shelf is frozen. At the and, time. And then you get to like right where like the continental... It's weird because how do you know whether you're on frozen ice or you, land? Well, you eventually <laughs> you eventually do. Like there's uh, there's data and scientists have figured out where it is. And so that's one of his points, right. like so waypoints. But, but it's GPS then. It's not like, oh, well, here's... It doesn't tell you where clear, the continent you know what I mean? starts. No. Yeah, because no, like no. frozen, that's just got to be... Yeah. Just a mess. Yeah, so yeah. then, so he goes, so that's his thing. And so it's, yeah, from, I guess, like north to south. So on this side, you'd be closer to Australia. Right. So, okay. Yeah. yeah it's, it's hard to, I know, to realize because it's on, it's the, the, on bottom, the bottom. And then it's like maps, of course, distort of how course. it looks. Yes. So I'm just, so it's kind of going like on a globe. So yeah. it's walking this way, like across it, right? Because yeah. Chile to, to like, so it's almost like a, East, west, or west to east. Yeah. I guess. Anyways. Anyway, uh, it's hard to... There's a little map there. Yeah. I don't know if that shows up, but... So in 2016, um, a descendant of one of, like, the first polar explorers... Sorry, can I ask? Just yeah. on the South Pole, is there just, like, literally, like, a pin or a flag that's, like, here's yeah, the point? Yeah, it looks... It's like a, it's know, like like a candy cane, and then on top of it is, like, this, like, mirrored ball on the top of it. Oh, yeah. But they have to change it every year because it changes. It shifts. Yeah, Who's so the, U- the US, USGS, US, oh, the ones that are? US Geological Survey. Who's, so who owns Antarctica? The it's land? Nobody does. It's like a like a treaty with a bunch of different countries. So what are countries that aren't in the treaty? Can they just come in and be like, this is mine now? Yeah, I don't know. But but there's different stations owned by like different, different yeah, yeah. countries. Yeah. yeah, I mean, no one wants to live there because why would you? Because that's, yeah. that's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> So in 2016, um, like I was saying, one of the descendants of one of like the original uh, polar explorers, he attempted this same type of crossing Mm -hmm. and he ended up dying. Yeah. What's the distance? It's over 900 miles. I know. I'm sorry. I should have. 1,500 kilometers? 1,550? Miles, two kilometers. Uh, 1,448. Yeah. So it's a lot. 1,448. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're walking, I don't know how much you're walking, like two kilometers an hour with all that gear on. It's a lot. So that'll take you 750 days? No. No, no, no. No. We'll get to it. Math is wrong. We'll we'll get to it. So then the next person to attempt it, his name was Ben Saunders. And this was in 2017 where he attempted it. And he had to abandon it because he didn't think he had enough food with him. Right. to complete the journey and so as soon as they heard that he didn't do it they're like sweet here's they're my chance. like here's our yeah. chance sorry that that divided by two is that's hours so like 750 hours if you're walking nonstop. yeah so yeah yeah well, not, not 750 yeah. days so he says the one thing that he that he says um he says too often answers or assumptions are thrust on us by those who say what our limits are what our frontiers or boundaries should be and then we come to believe it, and the more we believe, the truer they become. So it's like, don't let people put like boundaries and limitations on you. Mm-hmm. And so I think the like assumption that this, this like or, can't yeah. be done, he's yep. trying to to over to kind of like overcome. And that. you could see that so much in today when it's not even some crazy feats of like, oh, I want to cross cross Antarctica. It's like, oh, that can't be done. It's like, but even things like, oh, well. You know, you can't even get this job or you can't even get this promotion or or you can't even become this as like a career choice. It's yeah. like so many things are you're told that you just can't you can't do it. And and, the, and there are such little things. Yeah. I remember such little things when I was kids. Like, oh, you, you can't become a musician. You know, yeah. there's no way you could do that. And it's like 
really you can't become yeah. an artist or whatever yeah oh, oh there's no money in or you can't do that it's like all these limitations and for what it's like there's such a broad spectrum of what could be done mm-hmm. um and yeah it's, uh, it's unfortunate that a lot of youth these days are just told it what they can't, can't do. do it but not only that but even like you know all of the different feats that we've seen and that we've talked about people doing everyone before they did it everyone's like okay well, it can never be done yeah. and then someone then does done. it and yeah. it's done and it, even like with like running the running the mile and the, how fast yeah, you can go mile. yeah and then after it was broken then everyone was able to do it because yeah, yeah. so yeah and then what he also said what appealed to him were testing his limits and so he most of all of the expeditions that he had done before were in like a group setting. He had a guide and there was someone else or right. a group with him. But with this one, he said, I'd have to remember my failures and victories because of what they taught me. So he's no. going to have to dig really deep. Yeah. Go under the cookie jar. Yeah. Yeah. And so we got to, we got to do David Goggins because every time we, we have these references, but people are like, what the fuck is I he talking Go in a cookie I jar. It's a, it's a Goggins thing. I know. But yeah. Anyways. So he, is r- the always the main factor that has held people back from doing this is the nutrition portion of it. Mm-hmm. So he partners up with a company called Standard Process, and they're a group of like scientists, nutritionists, all of these people. So they were like looking at his physiology, like they did all kinds of tests on him to figure out how his body, like his biochemistry, how he digested things, what worked well for his body and what didn't. Right. And they came up with what they called like the Colin bar, which was like this like high calorie bar that was easy to eat in like negative 50 degree temperatures and but like light enough that he could have a bunch of them and carry. And uh, and at this time, so obviously has like a bunch of sponsors, I guess, to do because like that's got to be expensive. Oh, I yeah, imagine to get all these tests. Well, you have like all a these pl- and and all these like plane rides and all oh, that yeah, to get there. It's to not cheap. Yeah, yeah. 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 So um, what's interesting, and the this bar was also plant based. And the main kind of he's a vegetarian. I don't think or he vegan is. Or I don't something. think he is, but it was just the, I guess just, just plant based. Yeah, and so like the I'll main ingredient. Spoil or yeah, whatever. exactly. As, as much as like yeah, steak. Or and so the main thing that was in it was coconut oil. Mm. So because coconut oil has that weird pliability about it, like if you've ever cooked with it, it's really interesting because it's mm. even you were. Well, I know we it have today. it, but it's just uh, yeah. well. I mean, it melts at around. Yeah room temperature but then even like when it hardens like it doesn't like 100 percent harden like yeah it's, it's still like it's still like a paste it's still pliable i don't yeah. know if the paste is the right word no, but I, w- I would say paste yeah so then the other thing it's like almost like vaseline kind of yeah you say like that kind of yeah, i don't not know not really oh. so then the other thing he does is he gets this endurance coach athlete and so this guy's name is Mike McCastle and so he does these like amazing like drills with him and mm-hmm. so just I have to tell you about this Mc, Mike McCastle guy. He broke Goggins's pull-up record. Oh right, yeah. yeah. I think he destroyed it. Too, he destroyed it. Right. Yeah. He absolutely destroyed it. Was like four thousand and one, and then this guy yes. came along with like six thousand or whatever Fuck. in twenty-four da- twenty-four days. So, 24 days, 24 so hours. he did five thousand eight hundred and four pull-ups in a twenty-four hour while wearing a thirty-pound vest. Yeah. Why? Because crazy. But the, yeah, so this guy is, he's a Navy, I think he's, no, he works in the Navy. He's not a Navy SEAL, but he's in the Navy. Mm-hmm. So, and he trains like a bunch of other endurance athletes as well. Yeah. But what I thought was so amazing about this guy is he had him like do planks with like his hands in ice water. And then as soon as he would get out of ice water, he would say, he would then put his feet in ice water, make him do like a wall sit and then give him um, a Lego to put, like a Lego set to put together. Mm. So it's like, because you you're trying to figure out your dexterity too exactly. when you're freezing. Not only dexterity, but like mentally as well. Even though you're like, you're so uncomfortable, you have to be mentally, yeah, you know what's happening. So, how long did he have to do his wall sits and how long were his plans? I don't know. He didn't get into it. Um, I'd just like to know just for curiosity's sake. Sure. Yeah. But no, he didn't, he didn't get into that too much. But I just thought it was just like really, uh, really interesting Mm -hmm. it's like a really good uh, like a really good way to train i think of course he did of (laughs) course he did for that specific thing but that's what it's like so specific to what he's trying to do so and then he would what they would of course like go down to the beach and he would have like a sled kind of like to pull as well up slopes and everything and then he (laughs) has a little bit different weather on a beach than uh, well yeah so then he goes to the greenland ice sheet and 
does 400 miles in 27 days going across the Greenland ice sheet just like to practice in that type of weather yeah. pulling a sled and yeah. what it's like 600 and everything. Kilometers. yeah yeah so so that was his training in the nutrition so how long was his whole training period from i'm gonna go go do this i feel like it was probably about a year Mm. from what he was saying probably about a year maybe a little less not a spur of the moment decision no 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 no. this was really well thought out especially with the nutrition aspect of it so he what's really interesting too is he really goes into the history of like arctic explore like the antarctic Mm -hmm. exploring which is really interesting in and of itself because there's some really incredible there's this the super huge famous story of ernest shackleton Mm -hmm. and their ill-fated journey um, we Are talked they the ones that found uh, Megatron? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> so That's what I know from Arctic Exploration. Yeah, but like a lot of the people that we've gone over, especially um, Ross Edgley, they mm-hmm. talked a lot about Shackleton and how yeah. inspiring he was. Oh, for sure. So then October 2018 is when he embarks on this journey. So they leave from Chile. Um, <laughs> that is another one where he comes back. Oh, fucking COVID. What's going on with yeah, all these people? No. Touching elbows? It's 2018. It's, it's not well, it's closed because 2019 yeah. is the next. Know. Well, I guess maybe towards the end. Yeah. But anyways. <laughs> anyways. So, and he's 33 years old. And so... Um, and he was never heard of him again. <laughs> <laughs> no. So he's going over there to attempt this. And then... At 33. That's yeah. Crazy. And so then he's on this like big Russian cargo plane um, to get to the start and um, the guy beside him is also trying to attempt the exact same thing he's doing. Oh, they didn't even know? No, he knew, but oh. but so this is his competition that's going over uh, with At him. the same time. Yeah. And so this guy is 49 years old. He is Captain, Damn. Captain Louis Rudd from the UK, and he had been in the British military for 30 years as a Marine. So this guy's no joke. And he had actually previously led a team to the South Pole um, I'm not sure exactly what their th- what it was, but it took them 67 days. And so, what's Just interesting? To get to the South Pole. Well, yeah, I'm not sure what the route was that they took. They must, I think, they must have taken a different route. Um, Can I ask you yeah. how long should the trip take, or do you just want to? Uh, well, I'll get there. In okay, a minute. that's how I was like. Well, how long should this take? Yeah. Um, I mean, given his gear. Yeah. It's 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 a long time. <laughs> yeah. So this guy tries to get in Colin's head, like just kind of so like asking man, him questions. It's cold. Have you ever been there? Yeah, and just like constantly telling him because he's been on because Colin's been there before. He had to go to climb um, Mount Vincent, and which is the highest peak in Antarctica for his summit summits. And then he also had to do the pool there as well. So it's not like he doesn't have any experience there. Like he's no. been there, but this guy this I think has a bit more. Mm-hmm. So. Um, I think it, in terms of like how long it's supposed to take, like it's, I think like at least a couple months, if not longer. Mm -hmm. So he had packed enough food for 70 days, Mm -hmm. but then his sled was too heavy. So they had to take out and they planned then for 65 days of food. Who's, who's Collins or the other guys? Uh, Colin and his wife. That's what they were kind of packing his sled up. For 65 days, 65 days worth of food. Yeah. So that's what they had mm-hmm. expected. So, um, so are these guys both going to s- depart from the same spot? They drop them off like a mile from each other. <laughs> yeah, I guess they'll see them from there if it's flat. I don't. I don't think they can. Mm-hmm. He doesn't say he can. <laughs> um, and but they have to. They're traveling the same route. I would imagine. Yep, yeah, we'll get there, honey. Huh? Yeah. So, he says that. But he tries not to feed into, like, what the guy's saying. I mean, he doesn't mm-hmm. say much. He doesn't reveal much about, like, what he has done. Because he's done some, like, pretty crazy things up to this point, right? Mm-hmm. He doesn't really say anything. And he said, and he thought it could be kind of, an ad- like, a mental advantage. And he's like, yeah, it would be, like, an advantage for this guy to think he was just some sort of, like, pampered American millennial yeah. that doesn't know he's just trying to do this thing or whatever. Right. Meanwhile, um, you know, he's done this like awesome training I'm and he sure has all this f- The other guy knows food. about him though too, right? Because he's done all these other yeah. adventure stuff. So, And what he says is in, Ant- in Antarctica, overconfidence can be as dangerous as fear. So I yeah. thought that was kind of interesting. Is, so, uh, are there any, there's no animals there to worry about, eh? I no. think there's no, maybe no, no, some no. penguins. Maybe they're too cute. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> so and I, I think if you see them, they're going to be closer to the water, well, right? Of course, like yeah. they're Nothing, not going to be. Nothing's in land. No, no, he has not, not no 
anim- animals to you worry don't, about. Do you see any land in, Ant- in Antarctica other than maybe like when you're on the mountains and you actually see like rock, but it's just covered in snow. It's just I covered guess, in snow and ice. Like yeah. how thick? It's probably really thick to like it's to get like, down to the ground. Oh yeah, it's the yeah, it's really really thick ice, like a couple oh, kilometers. It's, it's thick. thick. <laughs> All right. So the base camp where they originally land is called Antarctic Logistics and Expeditions, and so this is kind of the main logistics place. It's a non-government organization where they organize and kind of keep track of all of the scientists, tourists, mm. expeditions, everything that's going there. And there's always people, someone always is man there, I would imagine. Yes. Yeah. Half, uh, yeah. And so what happens is, is that um, he has to check in with this, it, they just call it ALE, that he has to check in with them at a certain time every single night. And if he doesn't, for two nights in a row, then they go and send someone to his last GPS coordinates to pick him up because the, of something the is are on the, the sled. The, yeah, so they the, do have some communication. So obviously. he has GPS on him. They both have GPS on them and trackers, and, trackers yeah. and everything. And so Colin's tracker is uploading directly to his website, so you know where he is all the time, especially mm-hmm. because he has like all of these schools kind of following right. him. Yep. Um, so it's all very public, but the captain doesn't make it public he just kind of will update his blog or whatever just saying approximately where he is mm-hmm. so again so he's, he's there with his computer too he, he like has updating. something he has something he can like he like he's taking pictures for instagram and he like just all, like all in video little yeah. videos and everything all the time i wonder i guess they would have some kind of reception there because they got the, all the research stations or, or yeah. what have you yeah and you just do satellites or what have yeah. you so, and so because there's 24 hour sun, cause it's the summertime there in October, it's 24 hour sun. So then, so then charging your solar panels isn't a problem. So he's, that's how they're. Yeah. If they have power. Yeah. yeah. I, I always need to think about how yeah. they have power. Cause you don't need that much for just phones or whatever. But yeah. Yeah. So his mom. But that's hard for sleeping. Yeah. He has like a Still. face mask. So <laughs> his, mask. so his mom is like, she's super, she's, I don't know how she figured, well, he goes through how she figured it out, but she figures out how to track the captain. The yeah, yeah. So then, because then Colin can know exactly how far apart they are, which helps him. And this is where the competition comes in right. as well. So, um, because Colin obviously, or the other guy, the well, captain no. knows where he is because yeah. he's, he's posting it. Exactly. So he plays that little game. The other little game is when they get to right before they, they are kind of flown to their get off their start point, they have to weigh their sleds before getting on this little plane to, to get to that point. So they have to weigh or no, they don't have to weigh their sleds, but so the captain goes and he weighs his sled and he's like, oh, well, mine's 286 pounds. So how much is yours? Mm-hmm. And Colin's like, I knew mine was like at least 100 pounds more. more. Yeah. And he's like, I didn't want to weigh it because I didn't want him to see it. And I didn't want him to start chirping at me. Right. About oh, it's too heavy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah. So he's. That's it's, hard to even just pulling a, a 300 pound sled. Yeah. But and I guess it's on skis, but still. I wonder yeah. what the snow's like there. Is it like fluffy or is it like you no, know it's, just it's like it's a desert like so they have these crazy things they're called stress drugi i'm not saying it right okay. stress drugi but basically it's, it's like, like ice it's picks. like ice waves that the wind has like mm. formed these like ice waves and so um going over them sometimes you don't know what's on the other side and so at, there's one point where he falls down and it's yeah. like a five foot drop kind of whole thing he falls down into and not only that but when there's like whiteout conditions you can't see if you're coming a, up to one and then you ruin like your and skis you just, like, you just fall. yeah yeah so is he on skis he's on cr- cross-country skis and he has what's called skins on them and so the skins like improve his traction so then he's not like just sliding backwards they give him traction as he's going over the ice because it's not interesting because cross-country swing in snow you have traction but on ice obviously you don't so it's a different right but is it harder with skis to go up hills than it would be to just walk no because of the ice it's too slippery not only that it's gonna so i mean if you have like ice almost like ice the like on your shoes yeah no 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 no. and not only that but then it it give like if you go across across like a crevasse then also it gives you like length over a crevasse so then you're not gonna fall right in if you were just like 
one per slim person, you have the skis over this big break in the ice, right? Oh, there, there, there's, there's lots of those. There's tons much. of them. And they're like death falls. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there's, there's right. That and you couldn't jump into it. Well, I guess could you, but you don't want to. Don't want to risk it. Yeah. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> um. And so what I like to what he says is he's he says he views the start of adventure as like a, a blank canvas of hope. An unwritten story mm-hmm. hangs in the air in the uncharted sense of uh, possibility. So I just love yeah, cool. and especially with Antarctica being obviously completely a <laughs> white like blank um, yeah. place. And he says um, he says I was heading into a place where the regular scale of measurement in size and harshness of climate and so much else didn't really apply. And so all the old ways of measuring myself wouldn't apply either. So he's seen this as like obviously his biggest um, challenge yeah. challenge to date. So a few logistical questions, mm-hmm. if you don't mind. Yeah. So w- where are you pooping? And are you like picking it up? Do you have to pick it up or can you just leave it somewhere? So no. So his tent has like this little vestibule. And so uh, probably really similar to the vestibule we have in our tent. Okay. But, uh, but a bit more covered. So that's where he cooks. So he has, t- there's two sides to the vestibule. So yeah. he has one side where he does all his like cooking and whatnot. And the other side goes to the washroom. Where he pees and poos. But does he just go on the, on the, on the ice? So he, d- he digs a hole if he can. And then, he yeah. Digs a hole in the ice. Yeah. And then if he can. Do you have to? If not, then it's just on there? I guess and so. that's that? Yeah. And so you could leave it. There's no. For that, there is. Once you like get. There's no regulations. Once you get to the 89th degree of latitude, then you, can't. then you have to pick it up and put it in a bag. Yeah. Yeah. So he did that, obviously. And then when he got to the other side, then he was able to yeah. let it go. Well, yeah. So. Oh, you just dump it somewhere? Because that's yeah. going to be frozen forever. Yeah. Pres- yeah. Preserved for yeah. all mankind. <laughs> yeah. So he has, his first day is really, really rough and he barely goes far at all. He manages two miles in three hours. So that's not even 5k. 5k yeah. is 3.1 miles. Yeah. So, um, so he calls Jenna and she kind of gives him a pep talk and she's like, well, how far away are you from like your first waypoint, which is where the continent actually begins. And he's like, oh, I'm like half a mile. And she's like, Okay, we'll just get to that waypoint. Like, at least just get to that waypoint, and yeah. then I'll figure out a plan. So she tells him... To uh, so they're talking on the phone, on the satellite? Yeah, sh- yeah. And so she tells him to remove another five days of food. Because his the, po- the problem is is that his sled's just so, so heavy. That's, why don't you yes. eat the food? <laughs> so what do you remove? Just eat it. That's, that's true, actually. I didn't think about that. Yeah. But I guess you don't want to be too full. Maybe, I don't but know. still, because it's so dense in calories. But anyway, so he ends <laughs> just up... pack the food on your... I know. I wonder if you just fatten yourself up. He did. He beforehand. did. Yeah, because he knew he was going to lose weight. Well, yeah. Yeah. Just be like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go 30 pounds of well, weight. Because you're, you're going to lose 50 pounds. Well, and even the captain was like, oh, well, I lost... The last time I was here on my expedition, I lost 60 pounds. And oh, here, see a picture of how skinny I got. So again, just like trying to get in his head, right? Yeah. So... He eventually, he leaves behind about 20 pounds of stuff at this one, at his first waypoint. So the next day. Is he allowed to leave that? Yeah, is, I, I is guess Is someone so. going to come pick it up though? I don't, yeah, is I, I would imagine. Pollute, no, you know no, what no, I mean? no, I'm sure someone would come and pick it up. I just think because it's different because Everest, there's like so much garbage yeah. in Everest. But no, there, they're here. really, they're really crazy about like Which is what's good. up behind, yeah. of course. So then the next because, day. Especially because nothing gets just biodegrade, right? Oh, like it's just so there. It's cold, it's going to freeze. So the next day he manages nine miles. And so eventually he does pass the captain and um, he doesn't know that or mm-hmm. does he actually see him no he see he sees like, him hey. yeah and he's like oh, it's kind of weird um and so th- the next so he but he always he always tries to push himself further and is like just when he thinks he, he can't go he's any further he's just like well i have to go I have to do like another hour because what would root, what would the captain do? Like I have to just keep pushing myself. So this is where I wonder what the difference would have been for him if he didn't have that competition. Yeah. If the captain wasn't there. Yeah. I really, really wonder what the difference in his mileage, his daily mileage would be. And if he would have been able to push himself Mm -hmm. to get to the end of it. Because he knew that there was somebody on his tail. There was someone on his tail. Was really. Yeah. um, Putting his, his, dream at risk in, yeah. in a way right because yeah. it was his dream to, to 
to get that record. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, it probably, I'm sure, uh, from the sounds of it, it seems like it did motivate him to keep going and did give that extra bit of push. Yeah. It's definitely hard to say because he's never done it before. Um, but I think with the right people, that type of motivation would be would be helpful. But the thing is, is does he have anything else in his life that he could dig deep down to find that motivation and to find that inspiration to keep going? Yes, and he so does. He, probably, he talks yeah. a lot about like his family and Jenna, and that's what really pushes him forward too. Mm-hmm. Because even though his family is like like a quote unquote broken family, they his dad and his stepmom, they always invite like everybody to Hawaii once a year for like this big family yeah. so gathering. Even like, even his, like uh, step kids, and yeah, whatever. and their kids and yep. step kids or whatever, like everybody comes. So he has like a really good tribe and he's always like thinking mm-hmm. of those people. So not only that, so he actually doesn't listen to hardly any music or anything. He like deleted all of his... While he's on this trip? While he's on this trip. The, he only kept like a couple. And so he had a really rough day. Um, and so he listened to Paul Simon's Graceland album. Mm-hmm. And oh, that album. Yeah. Oh, that's a classic album. I, you know, I love that album. I know. So then what's crazy is, is he's having a really rough day and Jenna gives him a number to call. She's like, I need you to call this number. And he's like, I don't even know what the hell's going on. And so he calls the number and Paul Simon picks up. Oh, well, that's something. <laughs> yeah. And so he's talking to Paul Simon and Paul Simon's like. Is he talking while he's walking too or? I No. He, I, I got to make oxygen choices. It's <laughs> 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 time yeah. to be hardy. <laughs> Um, and so he's, so Paul Simon's like asking him like all these like really interesting questions. Where about do you poop? <laughs> well, nobody was like talking about like silence and Paul says like, it's the places between the notes that are the most important things mm. in songs. And so they actually have kind of like a deep, um, conversation. Like a philosophical conversation. Yeah. Yeah. So, um. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So it's, it's really cool. So, um, so then this one day he's going out to get something in his in his sled and he's usually like really careful about how he bends down so that he doesn't fog up his goggles because as soon as that they fog they freeze and then you can't see anything and he has like a replacement pair but he's not paying attention they fog up really bad he can't see and then all of a sudden he's like i have to pee like right away so he's just like okay well i can't see but like i can feel no. I, can feel. I can feel my junk. I know <laughs> where to go. So he pulls it down and all of a sudden he feels this like burning sensation on his junk yeah, and he looks down and the thermometer that's like on the zipper of his coat is touching his junk. And he's it's like, <laughs> he gets like a little like, like circle of like frost on it's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's frozen. So, but it's just so like those a little souvenir for you. I know. And he does like, it's a little bit like on his nose as well. So, um, but he's just like these small, like these small unthinking mistakes obviously like lead to like really big <laughs> consequences. So especially when, uh, so if you want to recreate, recreate this feeling at home, kids take something <laughs> that's minus 60 degrees. Yeah. No. Put it on you. Yeah. Yeah. So not good. No. So he gets to, so he gets to the, the, um, but yeah, I can imagine though. Another question too would be, mm-hmm. I mean, I guess maybe this is not really the point, but like what he's dressing and what he's wearing, because as you're doing this, you're probably sweating so much, right? Because you're talking about getting fog or whatever, Yes. but then you got to keep yourself dry because that sweat yes. freezes or whatever. Right. So like I can imagine well, having to go through so many clothes and how do you, to not carry so many clothes, what do you do after you've had something that's wet? How do you dry it? So he hangs up all of his stuff in his tent at night because that is like one of the main tenets in polar exploration is if you sweat, you die because that's exactly what happens yeah. is then it freezes to your body and then like you just die. Yeah. So he does have to be, re- obviously he has like, sp- I think Columbia was one of his sponsors. Mm-hmm. So he has all the, kind of all the good and gear. And they probably have those kind of. You know those sports things that like oh we kind of absorb the moisture or whatever we wick wick moisture yeah. away wick. Wick. wick 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 it away all right yeah. um yeah but and have multiple multiple pairs mm-hmm. but does he have any does he have any heaters no so you can't have like a some kind of he just has his his what he uses to cook his food like a propane thing yeah it's not propane it's some sort of fuel because that happens like the, cares- the, the, yeah. like the like literally like the camping ones that, that we have in a sense? i'm not sure or maybe something, something. more specific yeah yeah it's specific yeah more specific that can handle yeah. handle the cold yeah yeah well because i just wonder though because i mean it's minus whatever and you're in there 
how dry can this stuff even get? Yeah, I, dry enough. Like he's able to to get a dry. I don't know what to yeah. tell you. Yeah. And how big's the tent? Is it really big? Uh, no. Well, it's not going to be. He needs to be like as light as possible. No, I know, but so. he could still be light if it's still bigger. Because mm-hmm. if you need room to hang something up, right? And mm-hmm. Like lots of clothes. It's like how yeah. how warm does it get in the tent? It still doesn't get very warm at all. No, he's still cold all the time. So he still has. Yeah. He still has. To, what does he have to wear? And like. Is it just the his inside clothes that he has to, to dry? Because I'm sure he's wearing lots he of layers, really right? really doesn't get into it, so I don't know those answers. On yeah. So, <coughs> um, How many sleeping bags does he have? Is it just like just one? Just one. No. Yeah. So he becomes a machine. He starts doing like 13 hours a day is mm-hmm. like how, how far he's walking. And I'm he's sure... He's got nothing else to do. Well, <laughs> yeah. But like... Bra- like but like breaking camp and like setting up camp too, like that takes oh a yeah. lot especially of time, especially in the cold. That's so. where um, and putting then your hands in ice water and then assembling Legos yeah. is helpful. Yeah. Because putting things to, like I've done a lot of field work yeah. in like minus yeah. 20, 30 degrees, like Celsius. Yeah. It's cold. And especially if you're dealing with water and everything's just all icy, yeah. like you, your fingers are so numb, so numb and you, you need to do like precise work. Yeah. It's hard to do. Well, there's even a point too where, he's just not really thinking and usually he anchors his t- his tent to the sled and then anchors it on the ice and then puts whatever snow he can find up against it to like keep it anchored because the wind there is unreal so probably always constant eh? so the one day i don't know why he didn't anchor it to his sled it blew and away. almost blew away and it's like if that blows away you're dead because he doesn't have a replacement there's just that so Just he's have a, have a tauntaun somewhere well, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> no tauntauns. Tauntauns. so he's gra- trying to grab it like as tight as he can bef- so he can like try and like jump on top of it to stop it from blowing away but he describes like how like cold his hands are and because he's, been- he's just bare exposed hands I don't know. I think he had his mittens on at this point, but still, but then also he's using poles. And so for 13 hours a day, you're like a death grip on these poles. So yeah, your grip is going to be pretty worn out. So he's trying to hold it. He does obviously make like, it doesn't blow away. So, um, that's holding on for dear life. Yeah. Uh, In a different sense, you know, not hanging. And then if you let go, you fall, but this is like, if the tent blows away, then you die too. Right. So, yeah. So, he gets so he's so far now he's once after he gets to the um south pole like that's where the last guy in 2017 the year before stopped because he didn't have enough food Mm. and or didn't think he would have enough food so colin's at the exact same point with the exact same amount of food left and so how does he know that because he just knows about the other guy's expedition Mm. so he has a different type of food source but yeah so he has 15 days of food left but he figures it's going to take him 25 days to reach the other side Mm. so then he starts (laughs) yeah so then he starts rationing his food so maybe you shouldn't have dropped off 20 pounds worth of food at the start that makes no that makes no sense to me like I, i get the shedding of the weight yeah but did you not plan like he spent a year planning it's it's so weird because that's like the one, the least thing that you want to, to ditch. Yeah. But he's carrying. What was he doing with water? Is he carrying water or? Does no, he no, no. He's melting the. He's melting the ice. Snow yeah. or the ice, which again, that that takes like a really long time. And he does he melt so. it with like the sun and like a metal sheet that get the sun and. Do you know he what I mean? Doesn't get into it, honey. Or is he melting it when he's sleeping too? Is that when he gets the water? You don't know. I don't think that, no, I don't think he sleeps and keeps a fire going. No, not a fire, but just using like a metal thing that you put the snow no, on. No, I don't think so. And then it, the sun hits the metal sheet no. and then it no. focuses the light, right? No. That's not how he melts the snow? No. So he just does it when he's cooking kind yeah. of thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I guess that's a faster way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so he goes through one part that's called... Um, it's not an official name, but people that are are polar explorers, they call the Stress Strasugi National Park because there's so many of these stress Strasugi that are there, so it's really difficult to navigate through. So that was just one um, kind of part that's hard. Mm-hmm. But again, he thinks about the captain, and he's like, "I'm just, I'm just gonna continue going because yeah. the captain would probably continue going too." Yeah. So Meanwhile, the captain is like. 100 kilometers behind and he already quit <laughs> <laughs> no he's he's not that far behind like, i think there's t- different times where he's like maybe 35 like miles or 19 miles kind of behind at mm-hmm. times so he's not so super the captain's far. always behind he's always behind, behind him yeah 
Yeah. So, um, and well, then is he still talking to Jenna and still relaying information? Oh, of course. Every, every, cause they check in every night. And so he gets an update of how far yeah. the guy went that day. How much is he sleeping? Does he sleep well? Because I don't think so. No, he doesn't really talk about it, but I don't think he sleeps very well. So I'd be like, if you're just so tired, I know you're super cold, but mm-hmm. you're also so tired. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. And so not only is like, you see his body tired because you're putting in 13 hours a day pulling this sled. Um, Which at least it gets lighter and lighter every day. Yeah. But like <laughs> cognitively, because he's r- starting to ration his food, he's like having a hard time as well. So. Um, would something like this. Like g- getting it. I mean, I guess this would be re- really too hard, but like how good is the body adapted into like using ketones for, for your brain at this point? Because, you know, like that difference mm-hmm. between using ketones versus getting yeah. your, f- your fuel is that a thing or are you just working too hard for that to even be a I d- I don't know it depends what he's eating right because if he's if he's eating right. things that are other than just fat and mostly fat yeah like cuz I think like he has like noodles and stuff like that so you wouldn't even be in ketosis right, right? so right. yeah so you wouldn't be using ketones but that's a that's a really good I wonder if that, that, that would be something like oh well let's just do, we're going to do this whole thing and you're going to be in keto you're going to be on keto but yeah that's got to be, be tough because then what's your body I guess your body's burning just the fat, I guess, for energy as opposed I don't to, do you, you would need glucose. You do. Like so <laughs> there is a, an endurance runner. He's been on Rogan and there is an endurance runner who is keto until his runs. And then he takes like whatever, like literally the, the day of the run. He kind of like, I want to get some carbs because my body needs it to actually. Yeah. 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 So I don't think you can do, you can do endurance without carbs. Right. So, because you just burn through your oh, yeah. muscle or something. Oh, just burn through your muscle. Yeah. yeah. So he gets to a point where he is, he sees the transatlantic mountains and, or sorry, the transantarctic mountains. And so it's finally like a huge visual, visual change. The ice wall. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Where on the other side is space. The ice walkers. Is that what it is? The White Walkers. It's from Game of Thrones. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, which I haven't seen. Which you need to. Well, not because of, from what I heard about the ending. Well, I why, don't care. Well, the why? rest of it's really good. Did you even see the ending? No. Yeah. You, I think you don't even, you don't even care because you just heard how horrible it is. I, wanna, I, want, I want George R. R. Martin to just finish the this fucking like series. Is like crazy now? Like he's going off on Instagram or know. Twitter just oh, doing I a whole bunch of crazy stuff. I have no idea. I just want him to finish the series. Well, so. that's what I mean, but maybe he won't because he's no. crazy. I don't know. I could be totally off, but yeah. I don't pay attention to this stuff. So as he's going through the trans Antarctic mountains, he is told by ALE to take a very specific route down a glacier. And he's told he has to do this. If he doesn't take this route, they're, they would not allow him to go on this expedition. And so they have to vet everyone that goes on these expeditions. So they, he had put in his route and he had put in his kind of proposal to do this Mm -hmm. and they wouldn't let him do it until he did his Greenland crossing. So they're very careful about who they let do these expeditions and they are very specific about the route you have to take. And so even they told him like when you're in that stress, stress rookie national park, like What's a national park? Yeah. Well, that's no. Well, that's just what everybody calls it because right. there's so much there. They're like the like the, the likelihood of a rescue there if something happens is probably not very likely because a plane won't really be able to land on all of that uneven right. surface. So do planes just land basically anywhere there? Because well, uh, yeah, it's just like like on a skis rather than oh, like on water. Yeah, it'd yeah. be like a ski plane. Yeah. So, but the thing with this part is. It's part of like a quote unquote highway. I forget what it's called, but it's like this kind of highway, but, <laughs> but it's not really a highway right. because not it's all, just, it's just, um, they go from like McMurdo station and then they go to resupply the South pole. So it's just like a route that they go on. Right. Yeah. So it's not a highway. It's just, this is going to be important later. It's just like a route that they go on to resupply. So, but he's, he goes on this little kind of route and that's, but that's what they told him he had to do. Otherwise yeah. he could not do this expedition. So, um, then he kind of calculates and he does the math and he figures he only has about 40 hours left to get to the end. And so he says, 
A bigger, deeper part of me was hungry to push because I'd reached a place on the ice where all old boundaries of Antarctic math miles, calories, hours, days seemed up for renegotiation. It was time for me to explore the furthest boundaries of my potential. So he just decides he's just going to knuckle through and just finish out this thing in 40 hours. Without sleeping. Without sleeping. So that's what he does. And so... His so he calls his family so he has to he does have to stop to make water um and put the tent up and make water and so he calls Jenna right it's right in the middle of Christmas dinner it's Christmas mm. day and she's like oh my gosh like you're having such a great day you've gone like forty eight miles today like you're an awesome day and like, he no, been, and he's oh. and he's like oh I'm not done yet he's like I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go and he gets into this like and he describes it in the book he gets into this like zone. crazy flow state just this zone of just he's just a machine and he does it so he does 77 miles in 32 hours so yeah and then he's like so he gets to the end and it's just this like wooden post put in place by like the usgs of of this station where he is and he's yeah, like, like congratulations and well and it's like there's like nobody there exactly there's gotta be somebody there no, there's nobody there. And it's but it's in a it's a station, so he gets to go inside somewhere. No, not even. There's mm. no station there. Um, and so Sorry, then what's there? It's just a post. Yeah, it's just like this post marking like the end of the continent, because mm. the rest is just like oh, an ice right, shelf, right. right? So then he waits. That, that's where they're gonna pick him up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he he waits for the captain to. Uh, what do you mean he waits for him for yeah. how long? Just two and a half days. So it's not even that long. Still, it's just cheaper too. Like <laughs> with oh, the plane, they're, they're, they're both they'll go in the plane together. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So then he, that's what he does. What does he do while he's waiting? Uh, he doesn't say. He doesn't say. <laughs> what he does. I don't know. I, I don't know. for swim. You know, yeah. he's chilling out, chilling out at the beach. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. So and then and then what kind of chirping is he doing with the captain on the plane? Nothing. They, there's a really nice picture of them in there, just kind of like laughing and with each other on the on the plane back, which is pretty cool. Yeah, let me see this. So, do you mind? I'm really sorry. I have to go to the bathroom, and there's a bit more that we need to cover on this. Yeah, go ahead. So I'll just pause real quick. Yeah, we'll pause. I'm sure when everyone comes back, it'll be like you never left. Okay, cool. I had to go so bad. Yeah, no, it's all good. <laughs> okay. All right. So. Where were we? He crosses. He gets to the end. However, Nat Geo writes an article on their website. Sorry, into the mic. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just getting comfortable. So Nat Geo writes an article on their website, and the article is, his tale of crossing Antarctica was riveting, but how much was fiction? And it's called The Problem with Colin O'Brady. National Geographic publishes yes. a hit piece? Yes. I, I guess this is, what, 2019? So they're all into the clickbait stuff, no, too, No, so eh? this was published February 3rd, 2020. February 3rd. And he did this in 2018. Oh, two years later. Yes. Uh, but they're still yes. into this whole clickbait yeah. culture, too, I guess. I guess every whatever old school publication needs to figure out. That's that's unfortunate. Yeah. All right. Well, let's, let's, it's let's hear it. awful. They mm. ca they do like a full on character assassination of him. So not only are they saying like, because his, I think it it came out after his book was published because they're like, well this he's one, yeah. yeah. So he's like they're make he's making it out to be like he's the first person to cross Antarctica, and actually the first person to cross Antarctica on their own was this guy called Borland Ausland, and he was the kite guy, mm -hmm. and so it's like. In his book, I don't know how many Seems times like he says it pretty specifically. He says it so specifically, exactly what he did, yeah. and he even says like I'm standing on the shoulders of giants here. And he goes through, like I said, the whole history of yeah. this polar exploration, and he talks about, um, uh, yeah, sorry, Borg Ausland. He talks about him and saying like how inspiring his journey was for him and everything. Mm -hmm. And so not only that, he says that Colin lied about them saying that there would be a point in his journey where he wouldn't be able to be rescued, which like he, he printed like a 16 page, like line by line, what they lied about in this article. Mm -hmm. And he's like, no, like ALE told me and I have the email to show you this is exactly what they told me. Yeah. And then they went to town on him for going on this quote unquote highway and they made it sound like, and they say, oh, it's just like, um, sorry for like the um, calling for a rescue. Oh, it's just like calling for an Uber. 
And it's like, okay, it's not even. That's cool. what National Geographic said. That's a couple of people that they, one of the guys they interviewed said it was just like calling for. So an I mean, they obviously know who the author was. So yeah. I mean, is he suing them for defamation? Well, not the last time I checked. He talked. He went on Raw, um, Rich Roll's podcast mm-hmm. and did the podcast. I didn't listen to that podcast, but I listened to uh, Rich Roll had him back on to talk about and kind of defend himself. Like, cause he was on the podcast probably even before that whole. Yes. Yeah. And so then he had him back on to kind of defend himself against right. all these allegations because not only that, then when not, he went, not all these, just the allegations yeah. from national. So, not Geo. well, there's a ton of different allegations in here against him. Mm, and so not sure. only are they saying like, he's like lying or like overselling what he did, but they're like, when he was in Greenland, they interviewed some of the people on the expedition and they were saying, Oh, like, I think they found, like, one person to say, oh, he was a total fucking douche on this trip. What expedition? To Greenland, when he went across Greenland. He was but he was with other, other people. people. They were just doing it for He fun? was guided, yeah. Oh. And so they were like, oh, he was pushing us so hard, and he was, like, pushing us harder. Like, this one girl that was cried. Just, that, was, that was one guy. Yeah, so it's, How many people were on this expedition? I don't know. There was more. Like, there was more, and they didn't interview them. And then only that, like, Colin's like, it's a long piece. Like, the reading time says a 45-minute read. So it's a long piece. They called, the author of the piece called him and asked him like a couple questions and for like five minutes and I think he did that like three different times and Colin kept saying to him like I'm really sorry I can't talk like I'm just about to get on a plane kind of thing because he was in the middle of the book tour while he's doing this so he didn't have a lot of time and he said you know like let's schedule a time to sit down because it sounds like you have like a lot of questions and I want to be able to answer them not once did he sit down for a long interview no but then and then probably in the article is like Oh, there was no comment by Colin or something like that. No, they say like they do say they talk to him, but it's it's like it, they don't say that they didn't sit down for a long time right. to talk to him. So, oh, because he probably didn't know it was going to be hippies. Well, he of course he didn't. Yeah, so it's just really unfortunate, and it's like I don't know why that they went after him for this. Like well, there I must have be something. no idea. There must be some reason. So, and then it pissed me off because on Rich Roll's podcast, Rich Roll was saying, "Oh, well, it's, I think it's probably because you're kind of like a newcomer to pull, like to adventures and exploration, and so maybe you didn't do it in like the uh, the etiquette, the proper etiquette to do it." And it's and I I was like, I feel like Rich, you don't even know who this guy is because he's done a ton of different expeditions and this kind of thing he's already been to the south pole once Mm -hmm. so you can't tell me it's because he's new to it so that really pissed me off that rich was like kind of not giving the national geographic journalist a pass but just like trying to i don't know it really no but well i don't know maybe he was just saying or giving his opinions or ideas as to why they would have done that because if somebody would have felt slighted yeah but that's this sounds really calculated yes I don't know if you heard of what's going on. There's this big thing here with uh, Taylor Lorenz. I don't know if you heard of her as a journalist. She was a Wall Street journalist or still is or she was with it. Anyways, she wrote this, basically this hit piece on this other person um, that her business that she's, I think she's an immigrant. She came to the United States. I totally can't remember her name, Uh, but she was really friends with Gary Vaynerchuk or Gary Vaynerchuk is one of like a mentor, I, I guess. Anyways, but she, she, her group, what her business was to take a bunch of up, up and coming young people and like help them get famous on Instagram. So she had like a house where they kind of stayed or whatever. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so she wrote this hit piece and of course she writes hit piece and then she loses her whole job like right away, right? Because the people are going to, you know, yeah. it's, a, it's a hit piece, right? And it's like Washington Street Journal or whatever. So she's suing her for a bunch of stuff and it's like people are like, it should be like a slam dunk win kind of thing because she said stuff that was like blatantly untrue. Mm-hmm. But there's deep motivation for why she would do that in the sense that she's worked for an agency that is a direct competition with this person, yeah. right? So you know what I mean? So it's like yeah. obviously financial incentives to not do this. She was the one that outed, um, like went to like libs of TikTok and like okay. went to a family and was like, hey, what's going yeah. on? So like there's yeah. all that kind of stuff going on too. So she's the, the reporter. Very, very basically sleazy journalistic tactics yeah. or what have you. Um, so uh, yeah, like I'm trying to think there's got to be some reason like, like whether you agree with it or not, right? Like, did he do something to that author? Like, is that author an adventure person as well, too? Or I, do you yeah, know what I mean? Like, I know. Gotta, I, don't, think. I don't know. And then not only that, they're just like, oh, well, he's branding it as this, like, big, impossible 
thing because he calls his book the impossible first and he they interviewed this one guy his name's eric larson and he says i don't think anyone looked at the route he was skiing and thought it was even remotely impossible the reason no one had done it is because no one thought it was worthwhile in the sense of being anything record-breaking yeah so maybe it's just rubbing some people the wrong, the wrong way, way in that like well you know you wa- maybe not title it the impossible first as if it's i don't know maybe there is I wouldn't be surprised if there is like a tight knit community where there's like, you know, there's unwritten rules of how you have to behave or whatever. And like, maybe this guy just didn't fit in with it. And you know what? Then there's going to be quote unquote repercussions, right? Yeah. You know, old boys club kind of whatever, you know, like the NHL is like, but then you hear the interviews. It's like, Oh yeah. Well, the whole team worked hard, you know, next period you know we gotta get 110 percent. blah blah it's just the same old interview constantly yeah because like that's just whatever how you do it uh, you know then a guy like pk subin comes in is like well what's this guy doing he's being all flashy he's like well we can't have personality uh, so maybe there's something like that where yeah i don't know you can't write a book on this where there's so few people that do this kind of stuff you yeah. know like that maybe he broke some unwritten rules that's the only thing i can think of yeah and then the community's like okay well you know here reap reap the world we're in of uh yeah. you know doing this because uh, after guess, that you'd lose sponsors probably you know but i think it's like so unfortunate because the whole point is and like what he says because then he he goes on rogan yeah, to you talk promote about it. this stuff and you want to promote adventure mm-hmm. you want to promote people going to antarctica and doing these kinds of things so to help the community so he goes on rogan like right after he does he does this and then he goes on rogan again after the National Geographic uh, again. and after he, so he writes probably the does book a tour comes. with Rogan and then Rich Roll and whatever, trying to get this point. So, um, I forget what I was going to say now. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but like what he says, he the, whole, like after. the whole point of it though, is he has a nonprofit and the whole point of the nonprofit mm. is to help kids reach their potential and yeah. like help. They partnered with another organization that tries to combat childhood obesity. So it's like, he's not, he has a fucking nonprofit. Like he's trying to be a good person wow. and, prov- and like, and help out well, and the, try the, to inspire other people. The Clintons have a nonprofit. <laughs> Doesn't mean it's necessarily good, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm hearing what you're saying. Yeah. So it was I just totally like, hear what you're saying. so I really hope that people would read the book before they read this article and not think, oh, this guy's just like a fucking shyster. And he's I like, I would never read that article because I mean, yeah. I don't even read. Well, and I didn't know, book. I didn't know about it until I read up till I was like looking for different podcasts. Right. It wasn't, that he it was wasn't in, in here. It was no, because he, uh, he wrote book. this first. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah so if you would read that article, you would think like, oh, this guy's well, even, even, I don't know, even then. He still, I, I mean, he still did it. Mm. Well, and not only that, but like there was two people that attempted the exact same route and then, th- and then the captain was attempting it too. So it's not that it wasn't worthwhile. Other people had looked into doing it before. So it's like, why you got to shit all over him? Like yeah. it was just, yeah, I really don't understand what the motivation is. Did they say is. anything ab- about the captain in this they do, article? Th- but the captain refused to comment because he's like, I don't want to be a part of this bullshit that you're doing. Mm. Like this is ridiculous. So... Well, he wouldn't have known that it would have been a, a bad article either. I th- I think the questions that they were asking mm. and then seeing what other people were saying, they trying didn't to, know trying the to get him story. to jump on him. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I just thought it was really shitty. Yeah, that sounds unfortunate. Yeah. So, um, but the cool thing, though, is he's done a lot of really cool things since he did what's called, he names like all of himself, all of the things. Um, the impossible so he did the impossible row so he rode from across it's called the drake passage which is from like the tip of south america to then to antarctica so he did mm-hmm. that and he did that in a group with um five other people yeah. i think i could see how that could rub people the wrong way because even that yeah. even when i hear that i'm like yeah it's it's a bit much the row yeah or like the impossible row or yeah and then it's like the impossible yeah. walk it's like but I think it's, it's getting a little bit too maybe, but too it's just much. like again, I think it's just to try and like he was saying, we all have limitations that are put on us, things that we are told are impossible. Yeah, what's your impossible? Yeah, so I think that's no, no, the I get it. But I can, again, I could still see it as people being like, yeah. "Come on, stop calling everything you do impossible." impossible. <laughs> yeah, because clearly it obviously isn't because you yeah. do it. Uh, but, but that's not worth assassinating someone's character well, and, no. and trying to take away their livelihood. Yeah. And then so he, after that, then he attempted to climb K2, which I think is the second highest mountain in the world. 
and it's in the Himalayas and to attempt to summit that in the winter, which hadn't been done before. The Im- See, then they've got like the impossible K2. People well, it's like, called oh, the, oh, come he on. calls it the impossible summit. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. So he attempted. Yeah, it's, uh, that's, it's a bit much. So he attempted that's that winter 2021, um, but he, he failed. didn't. I th- I'm not sure well, if he made it to the it top. Turns out it someone is else, Someone else made it to the top before, before him. him and his uh, climbing partner. And then um, the other thing he did was he did um, Everest. And so he climbed to the top of Mount Everest. And then he kind of went next door to Lhotse, which is, I think it's the sixth highest mountain in the world. The impossible Everest. Does he call it that? No, he called it Everest Lhotse No O2. So he, they did that without oxygen. Mm, there you go. So, yeah. so That's a real climb. That, yeah. That's what I was the second time summiting Everest then. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And this time without oxygen. So. Yeah. And, and is oxygen usually only on the, the, the camp four to the, the top? Yeah, I think so. Usually that's, yeah. the, that's the way to go. Yeah. So, and then the other thing that he just came out with this week is because he's coming out with a new book. And so it's called The 12 Hour Walk. And so the, I think the whole point of it is um, to invest, like to invest a single day that will unlock your best life. So you just walk out of your house. He says, walk out your front door alone, turn your phone or on airplane mode, no music, no podcast, no social media. Maintain your solitude while walking for 12 hours. So, Well, the impossible walk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you want to try it? So, uh, That's a good segue into... Uh, yeah, no, that's no. not for me. Like, no? I don't... I mean, everyone has their motivations for, like, not going with... Going without music or going... And I don't... That's well, not... Well, not going without music, but I mean just going on a 12-hour walk. I would totally do that. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah. Oh, I, mean, yeah. I mean, I, I think... The idea, some people like music, some people don't, whatever. But I mean, I think the whole idea is to just to push yourself to do something that yeah. is going to be difficult. Like even just yeah. walking for 12 hours is going to be real hard. Yeah. Like even just remember just walking for like a couple hours to get to uh, when we did the Sleeping Giant thing, right? Yeah, that was more than a couple hours. Yeah. I Actually, like I guess that. Eight that was hours. Day. Yeah. So we did it. <laughs> yeah. With like no water. <laughs> that was, oh that was, that it's was like walk for 12 hours. hours with no water. We had, we each had, yeah. Our sleeping giant thing. We w- we went for a, it That's was awesome. probably like eight hours because it took like two hours just to walk to the base of the the hill. Yeah. I don't know what you call it on a mountain, but sleeping giant in in uh, Thunder Bay, Ontario. Yeah. Then you climb up for a couple hours and down and whatever. Um, so we didn't know how long it was gonna take. So we, w- we were just with the kids, we're like ah, we'll just each just bring one thing of water and just like one of those canteens, which is like Not maybe seven hundred <laughs> milliliters. Yeah, seven or eight hundred mils. It wasn't even a liter. And yeah, I was like, it must have been like eight hours. And it was like, of course, it was like 30 degrees. It's just like super hot. And we had just no idea. And then we ran out of water. Like as soon as we realized like, oh, guys, we got to start rationing our water because yeah, <laughs> we're not going to have very much. And we ran out and then, yeah. oh, man, the kids were miserable. Everyone <laughs> was like, we just got to make yeah. it. Um, so if you can do that without you know unplanned, like 12 hours, not that bad. But it's still mm-hmm. hard, I guess is the point. It was still yeah. still a rough go. Well, not only that, like there was some pretty significant climbs like yeah exactly it wasn't just a straight wasn't walk just either a straight walk but you're going up high yeah that was yeah. a good that was a good hike it was, it was a fantastic hike oh yeah, um it was amazing but anyways so yeah i mean those are kind of the little things that you could do it's like you know what just go for a little well and it makes i guess like it makes it accessible to people because pretty much anybody can walk so and he says yeah. you know, like take as many breaks as you want just yeah. like, go out for 12 hours and i think maybe like disconnecting from everything is like a form of meditation because he does talk about like meditation and stuff that yeah. tree said he did so I, I guess it could be like that i guess like whatever your goals are for me like i don't I don't feel a pull to do that type no. of silent yeah. thing. Well, I mean, no, oh, for the silent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But I, I like the uh, the endurance aspect and, you know, uh, yeah, if I, I really do like too. any triathlons or any of that yeah. kind of stuff, right? You just need to, that's just kind of part of, part of training or whatever. Yeah. 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 So, um, going to the Arctic, Antarctic. Want to go? Yes, no. It'd be really zero to ten. It'd be really cool to see just to see it. it go to the South Pole. Yeah. Do people so really people cool. just be like, yeah, I just want to go to the South Pole. You can do that. Yep. You gotta pay for it, but yeah. yeah. How expensive is it? You I think the whole know. trip would be? I don't know. Probably more expensive than Everest, even. You think? I don't know. Because I think I've Everest, it's Everest, Everest it's expensive with the, the permits. The permits, but and this I would don't be more know. expensive because of like the planes and uh-huh. how to even get there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I'm I mean, if sure. you can fly all the way down from Peru, right, or whatever it is, I love you so much. Not Peru, oh, it's Peru. 
Peru is What's on the, yeah, yeah, the yeah, West, on the West Coast. Coast. Um, Chile. Chile, that's the word. Thank you. Peru, Chile, they all sound the same. Gosh, <laughs> it's completely so different. Funny. I Every know. Time. Peru, right, mm. right. Um, mm. Yeah, you can just fly down from there. So that's not so bad. Getting getting there is not so bad. No, no. And so there's yeah. there's so many expeditions that go up from there because when when you fly into that kind of base camp with the ALE, the expedition place, mm-hmm. like so many people use that as like their base point for climbing Mount Vinson or Vinson Massive, which is the tallest mountain there, or going yeah. to the South Pole. And there's so much research happening there too. Right. So how long does it take to get to the South Pole? Uh, there's a picture of the South Pole. Well, that's a little thing. I still takes like didn't he say it take him like thirty days? Because he said once he got to the South Pole, he said it was going to take him thirty five days to get to the other. He's he he was calculating twenty five. Twenty five because uh, yeah. the South Pole seems seems like it was about half the journey. Uh, yeah, uh, I, th- I think it was approximately half. Yeah. So yeah, so it's a good month. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a long time to be cold, and the frostbite is the thing that will kill me. Yeah. It's just so cold. I hate the cold. Yeah. 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 I love coming in from the cold. But there's nowhere to come in. <laughs> there's nowhere to come in when you just have a tent. Yeah, I'd want to get. I'd want to have some kind of heater. Mm-hmm. I'd like a backup tent because I guarantee you that tent's flying off. Well, you <laughs> <laughs> for me, I'm like, oh shit. Well, it's like, but it's like he had to and make I choices. Well, we all need a tauntaun. Yeah, absolutely. It's like you have, like he was having to make choices of like what he should be taking and not taking when he had to drop off like yeah. twenty pounds of his gear. So yeah, yeah. That is a really good point, though. Why didn't he just like stuff his face with all of that food? Well, twenty pounds is than still, that's no, too much. No, but to it eat. wasn't just food; like it was other stuff too that he left. Like he left, I think, like an ice axe, which is going to weigh a lot as well, right? Mm. So, yeah. Yeah, but just eat like five pounds worth of food, especially if it's yeah. really condensed. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if that'll play havoc with or you. Or like shove it in. Well, he did. There was one point where he woke up in the middle of the night and had food in the tent, and he just like was like half asleep and just so hungry, not thinking, and he ate more of his Colin bars than he should have <laughs> and then yeah was he sick he sharded yeah in his pants yeah that's gross yeah how'd he clean that wet wipes God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I could you just imagine yeah. like having like fucking diarrhea or some shit like that because your you know stomach is all yeah. in knots yeah I don't know oh it's got a good spread <laughs> oh. <laughs> anyway oh. so uh, yeah there what's going on God damn. um yeah so i mean we'll put it on the back burner of going to antarctica yeah. i don't know if the kids are gonna want that kind of trip I, I would love to go see the penguins that'd be really cool but that's just like going to see the penguins yeah. you just still be cool. you could just rent a national geographic show oh are we gonna are we boycotting them now because we don't like them anymore because of what they what they did to my boy colin <laughs> i will I, it's I, unfortunate it's really unfortunate and but like he asked there's them lots to of re- different divisions and groups and he that's just asked like them to retract it and like i said he on his website he has like a 16 page rebuttal and he rebuts every point but and still, he like he it doesn't even matter because the damage is done well right? i know but it's like you still have to and like they're so dishonest they took one quote of his book from like one page and then another quote and from they mashed like it together and he's just like, and he goes, obviously he goes through it and he's just like, it's <coughs> so fucking dishonest. Yeah. Like it's disgusting. Yeah. There's this clip that's going around. It's a, uh, it's a Simpsons clip, but it was, um, it was in comparison. Someone was like, well, the, the January 6th, the, the whole committee hearing, mm-hmm. it's like, it's plays like the Simpson clip where they get, there's this clip of Homer Simpson of like, you know, doing something wrong with like a babysitter or something like that. We had inappropriate relations with the babysitter. Yeah. And they, yeah. they take a clip of Homer and it's like so obviously stitched together because uh. he's talking. And then the, the hands, the minute and the hour clock of the of the clock, it's going back and forth because you could tell that they're cutting they're it cutting apart. It and yeah. <laughs> they're just, just get him, getting him to, you know, stitching the words together. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's a little dishonest yeah. what, what, what you're doing. Um, yeah. So anyways, it's just... It's just unfortunate that people do things and they can just like they can get away with it. Like for him, he's just like, you should just, just sue. Well, and like that's what like Rogan was like, dude, like that's de- like his defamation. Yeah. Like everything they said about him was defamation and he can prove like point by point everything that they said that yeah. was wrong. Even some of like the historical information that they gave was, was wrong. patently yeah. wrong. Well, I mean, there's not much you can do about that. But like, yeah, but it's just like just you, you can't, your editor can't fact check that like it clearly was well that's what i mean because it, it's not it doesn't it's not that it needs to be a fact check it's that there is a specific motivation 100%. behind it right 100%. so like that's that's yeah. what it is so and if you're not going to push back then they're just going to do it again so yeah and yeah. regardless like 
even if you don't think it's a worthwhile thing to do, well, I don't give a shit what you said. What he did was incredible. Yeah. Like, who cares if you don't think it's worthwhile? Write your article it's based incredible. on that. Write an opinion piece yeah. that says, like, okay, he it did wasn't this, a but worthwhile like, listen, thing. This yeah. is why I think he shouldn't call it the incredible first or whatever, yeah. the impossible first or whatever it is your beef is. Yeah. And do it in a way that is consistent with, you yeah. know, the law. And a lot yeah. of people talk about you know, free speech and all that stuff. It was, mm-hmm. Yeah, free speech is, it's obviously, it's fantastic, but that doesn't mean you can defame lie. people, just lie <laughs> about some people. Yeah. That causes negative impacts to their ability to, yeah, to, you know, make it earn a living, right? Like, because yeah. if he loses, he, I don't know if he lost sponsors. I could imagine as soon as the article comes out, it's like, oh yeah, we're going to try to, try yeah. to pull away. So yeah, it's unfortunate. It's yeah. unfortunate that that even happens, but mm-hmm. business is cutthroat. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. But on a scale of one to ten, in terms of just like a book. Oh, ten. What's, oh, really? It's that good of it's a book? It's so eh? good. I was so well surprised. Did he write it himself or did he have like a ghostwriter? No, or I think he wrote it himself. Yeah. yeah. It was so, it really surprised me. I was not expecting just it like to be such a good book. Yeah. yeah. And he weaves like, he weaves back and forth. Like I did it in chronological order, but he weaves back and forth. Like you read the book? And no, when we did the doing the podcast right now oh you i did went it. through it in right. chronological order of his life but he oh. goes back and forth right in the story. as he's on the ice thinking back to the lessons he learned on other expeditions right. and how he's then he recounts them. that, that chapter. yeah That's so really cool. it was really so well cool written. Yep. so well written so and like uh, we only like hit the tip of the iceberg oh see god what no I did pun there? intended see what yeah I did there? no um I, I, I yeah saw so it and w- i'm cringing <laughs> yeah, so I cannot highly recommend this book enough. It's I so so great. I cannot highly recommend this enough. Anyway. Is that a say? Is that good? It's highly recommended yes. by Andrea. No, yep. that's really good. Mm-hmm. I mean, for a while there, we were, get, we we're busting out the tens out of tens. Mm-hmm. We're gonna need to take all the tens, and you're gonna have to rate those ones because oh, to figure don't out how to make me. <laughs> don't make me. Yeah, I guess we should do. We should put like a reading list up on the website or something. Just, or just with like a all of our books the books yeah or like go, go, going back and looking at what the star ratings were mm-hmm. yeah 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 well, that was a good one well you should get on that yeah i guess i should <laughs> <laughs> uh we gotta hire somebody we gotta hire some people to do this stuff mm-hmm. so we can start focusing on other things mm-hmm. but anyways mm-hmm. yeah yep it was cool a it was a good one good yeah yeah no it's fun it's fun Ah, uh, it's always fun hearing mm-hmm. what people do. It's mm-hmm. just really cool. And the I stuff just that people can do. The other thing I really liked, just that I'll mention, is just him and his wife and how they are just such a they complement each other so well, and they're mm-hmm. such a team in trying to achieve all everything that they're trying to achieve. Yep. And so it was that was a very evident, mm-hmm. and and he really like like builds her up and says like it wouldn't be possible without her so that was a really awesome too so. yeah i mean you better after almost screwing I it up know, yeah. yeah 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 so yeah um do they have kids nope yeah no. it's always easier when you don't have kids yeah but yeah. um we'll figure something out yeah cool awesome no that's awesome yeah so yeah whatever we do i i know we'll be a team we'll yeah of we course always, we, we always are we always are yeah. always have been always, always will, will be. be maybe <laughs> we'll see what happens <laughs> Just holding out till something better comes along. That's rude. Oh, that's, rude. Yeah, that's so rude. Yeah, so are you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Always good to keep options open. Um, Pick me up a new model. Yeah, you know. This one comes with a rechargeable battery. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Talk about a human or a something else. Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> Time to move on before Andrea starts blushing. Mm-hmm. All right. Chris by five. Yeah, I guess we can do that. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Thank you for listening. Absolutely. That was a good one. You're getting better at this. I know. I'm so proud of myself. Check us out at odilmanandrea.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, we appreciate uh, all of your support. We appreciate you watching, mm-hmm. listening, tuning in, however you'd like to tune in. Mm-hmm. And next week, we'll be back with not David Goggins, but we will <laughs> one of these days. We'll do a David Goggins book. He's got a new book coming out, too. What? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I thought I thought I saw it. I don't know when it's coming yeah, I'll out. I'll have to check. Am I lying? Oh, I should. I should. I'll, I'll, I should I'll, I'll double you. check. I thought I saw that there was a book of his coming out okay. um, this year, but we'll see. It'll literally it's, be the best book ever. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like I'm gonna it's lose, already a bestseller. I'm gonna I'll lose twenty pounds just, just by like, having to. Really, you open it. You open up the book. It just starts yelling at me. <laughs> it's like, oh, motherfucker! It's like, oh, God damn! God, this book. This book is crazy. Oh, yeah, it's funny. like the book will only activate <laughs> when you're like running 20 miles. It's like you gotta like 20 miles, it opens under speed. Yeah, it just yeah. opens under speed. Yeah, 
exactly. It's like you have to like put the blood and sweat <laughs> on it, and then it's like the pages magically appear. <laughs> Only with DNA, blood, and sweat, and tears is when uh, uh, the pages well, magically it's unfold. It's so funny. Yeah, it's funny because it's true. <laughs> Anyways, cool. thank you again, yes. and we'll see you next time. See you next week. <laughs>